ശങ്കരാചാര്യപര്യന്താംസ്വരൂപന so it is again a joy any day it's a it's an occasion of joy to meet all of you yeah some of yeah and uh, so we will continue with uh, the yoga vasishtha sara vairagya prakaranam we have to see this seventh verse you may say drushyatyanta bhava bodham drushyatyanta bhava bodham vinatanna anubhuyate vinatanna anubhuyate kadachitke na chinnama kadachitke na chinnama svabodhon vishyata matah svabodhon vishyata matah ya तत् नानुभूयते ओके स्वबोध तुभूयते दट कैनाट बी एक्सपीरियंस्ड अनुभूति इज एक्सपीरियंस स्वानुभूति और अनुभव सो नाउ इट इज राइट सो अनुभव ओली थिंग इज जनरली वेन वी से अनुभव एक्सपीरियंस सो इट हैज ए डिविशन एसोसिएटेड विथ इट दट यू आर द एक्सपीरियंस एंड समथिंग एल्स इज देर द अदर which is the experience and also experience is a process it's a, it's a phenomenon so in that sense atma sakshatkara is not an experience in that sense but still the word anubhava alone is used in sanskrit so that's why we say indriya ka anubhava baudhika anubhava atma anubhava this is how it is said in sanskrit so that atma anubhava atma sakshatkara realization of one's self which is the jivan mukti this mukti uh, in the vision of vedanta is is very interesting if you ask a karma person mukti is gaining a lot more punya and thereby going to heaven that is the mukti the mukti paribhasha is different for different people so that is the mukti and uh, uh, for a uh, suppose a person is there uh, high in hospital suffering from some disease so you ask him what is mukti he will tell really what is mukti so becoming free from this disease and from this hospital is the mukti that is the mukti so everybody has his own or her own paribhasha about mukti and of course the the philosophers of various doctrines they have their own paribhasha and uh, this is the dharmika paribhasha means do some more punyam do some more dharma and uh, acquire a lot more punya so that you can go to heaven or whatever uh, whereas uh, upasaka sar there this upasaka uh, their mukti is for karma anusthana one should be grahastha Uh, without being a grahastha you cannot do karma that is for upasana you may be a grahastha you may not be a grahastha that's why we find uh, most of the sanyasis and most of the ashramas and uh, the cults of the sects etc they are all upasakas they are sanyasis all right but they are all upasakas among the sanyasis also you have a variety of them and uh, most of them are upasakas Tridandi etc. They are all upasakas. If you want some details about it, you, may, you are you are advised to refer to Bhagavad Gita 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 Bhagavad
सो इज उपासक स्वामी और उपासकास कंडी गृहस्थास आलसो समटाइम्स वॉट हैपन सो दिस गृहस्थास और उपासकास सो दे हैव द नेम्स ऑफ सन्यासी अंड सम सन्यासी नेम्स दे पुट बट स्टील दे आर गृहस्थास लाइक फेमस कृपालु जी महाराज जगत गुरु कृपालु जी महाराज इज ए गृहस्था एंड सो बट उपासका एंड द उपासना इज राधे कृष्ण उपासना सो वॉट विल हैपन बाय उपासना यू विल गो टू गोलोका दट इज दी दट इज दी मुक्ति गोइंग टू गोलोका गोइंग टू प्लेसेस टू ए पर्टिकुलर प्लेस इज दी मुक्ति दिस इज हाउ उपासका रीचिंग द लोका ऑफ दी देवता इज मोक्षा फॉर देम ऑल उपासना संप्रदाय सर लाइक दैट ओनली द नेम्स वेरी लोका नेम वेरीज द गॉड एस आर गॉड नेम वेरीज बट इन प्रिंसिपल दिस इज हाउ उपासका सर आर आर and very interestingly all upasakas all of them no exception talk of adhinna nimitto padana karana that is their thesis this extra cosmic god is just not there in india you have to come out you leave the shores of india back behind and then you will hear about extra cosmic god in india even a kind upasaka will say अभिन्न निमित्तोपादान कारण फर दिस्जगत लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल शाक्ते जैसे शक्ति इसके अभिन्न निमित्तोपादान कारण फर दि जगत गणपथ्यास दे आर नॉट देर बट दे सम रेफरेंस आर देर अबाउट देम गणपति इसके अभिन्न निमित्तोपादान कारण इफ यू टेक गणेश पुराण गणपति इज प्रेजेंटेड एस दे अभिन्न निमित्तोपादान फर दि जगत दीज आर ऑल उपासका सो फॉर देम The gaining of the devata loka is the moksha. Whereas for Vedantins, there is no gaining. You need not gain anything because uh, they have certain uh, loss, inviolable loss. Like uh, what you gain, you will lose again. And therefore, it is not a moksha in real terms. Uh, therefore, for them, moksha is the swarupa, va atma, brahma. moksha they are synonyms they are the same vastu the same vastu is the moksha means nitya mukta that is the atma so ever liberated therefore the absence of moksha as we experience it namely the, the, it is the bondage that we experience in life so the bondage in terms of uh, the absence of fullness the insecurity and then uh, a uh, general sense of unsatisfactoriness and always uh, the sense of wanting something or the other uh, this is the bondage fear of death and all those things are included in it this bondage that we experience everybody experiences it it is entirely caused by a proper lack of understanding therefore ajnanat bandha jnanan moksha this is the situation now it sounds very simple really बट दट मोक्षा तत् न अभूयते इट इट डजेंट कम टू युअर एक्सपीरियंस यू हेव टू एक्सपीरियंस इट यू नो इफ नॉट एक्सपीरियंस यू यू हेव टू फील इट आई एम ए लिबरेटेड सोल यू हेव टू फील इट से थिंकिंग इज नॉट एनफ थिंकिंग इज वॉट आई मस्ट बी ए लिबरेटेड सोल बिकॉज आई एम आत्मा एंड आत्मा हैपन्स टू बी ब्रह्म आई मस्ट बी ए लिबरेटेड सोल आई शुड नॉट बी एनीथिंग अदर दैन दैट दिस इज थिंकिंग but uh, that must be should become ayam so it is not a statement it is not a statement anymore it is what you feel deeply within this is called sakshatkara <coughs> so this atma sakshatkara and jivan mukti it doesn't come uh, to anybody's uh, experience tat nanubhuyate how without vina without without what bodha knowledge deep understanding that inner vision that is the bodha we never say ghata bodha the bodha is a very special word we say ghata jnanam ghata jnanam means ghata is the other i am the other i am the knower that is the known there is a process of knowing using the mind as an instrument of knowing that is the ghata jnanam not generally we don't say ghata bodha you may say 
Because the word comes from Buddha, Avagamane, some such meaning is there to know. Therefore, but generally, in the, Sanskrit, in the Vedanta literature, Bodha is a realization. That is what Bodha is. You, you see, you only can say, I know the path. You don't say, I realize the path. You know? Realization is something about one's own true nature. So that Bodha, realization. Suppose you say, part I know, but now I realize that it is only Nama Rupa. That is what realization is. It is only Nama Rupa. It's not real. That I realize now. So that is called realization. So you see, but you just see, but you see through the unreal, the veil of unreal things. And then you arrive at the truth. Yes, pasyati sapasyati. That is the realization. So what is that you have to realize as a precondition? Vina means precondition. Without that, you cannot have jivan mukti. We are discussing about jivan mukti. What is the precondition for jivan mukti? Drishya atyanta abhava bodha. So, in Yoga Vasishtha, like in some of these Vedanta texts, the Vastu is presented in very clear, uh, forthright terms. So, no super quoting. So, the Drishya is utterly non existent. Atyanta Abhava. The word Atyanta Abhava is a technical word and it is a part of the definition of Mithya. Sva Atyanta Abhava Adhikarane Bhasamanatvam Mithyatvam. Mithya is that which shines or which appears, bhasamana means appears, which appears in a locus, adhikarana. Uh, you see, locus you can say, but uh, even better than locus, because uh, the cup, the table is the locus for the cup. Whereas, uh, mrut is not the locus for the cup, table is the locus room is the locus. Where it is located, that is the locus. Uh, so, whereas uh, murut is not locus, it is the substratum or substantive. The cups, the substantive of the cup is uh, murut only. So, we are talking of that kind of a thing. Therefore, the the appearance, uh, so atyanta bhava, so swa atyanta bhava adhikarane bhasamanatvam. Swa is the serpent, example. Swa means itself. So Swa is the serpent. Swa Atyanta Bhava, the, the complete or total non-existence. Total means what? A non-existence only, but it is really made very clear. Because sometimes uh, this Abhava also could be relative. So not there at all. Therefore absolute non-existence, that is the Atyanta Bhava, a serpent. The absolute non-existence of the serpent, Swatyanta Bhava. What is the substantive or substratum in which the serpent doesn't exist at all? The rope. That is the substantive. And uh, on that rope you see the serpent, Bhasamanatu. That is the Mithyatma. Now, you see, this is where you have to really, really uh, see it clearly and understand. You go to a movie and you are seeing the movie, what is the locus, or uh, what is, okay you say locus, what is the locus of the movie? So screen, that is the immediate answer, on the screen you see, okay what are you seeing? I see a helicopter flying, helicopter flying, helicopter cannot be sitting in the air you know, it can only sit on the ground, in the air means it is flying only. So this helicopter flying I see. Okay, where do you see the helicopter flying? On the screen. Come on, you think one more time and answer the question. You, will not, you, you cannot see a flying helicopter. A, fly, a screen cannot be the locus for a flying helicopter. That is not possible. The screen will be torn into shreds. You cannot have a flying helicopter on a screen. So then uh, where is this uh, flying screen, uh, this uh, flying helicopter? You, you locate it in some place. So, you have to say, in the light it is there. <coughs> so, you, you avoid the right answer as far as you can. So, uh, so the light is there, you know, light. 
This light, this flying helicopter is located in the light. Uh, you think one more time, is there any flying helicopter in the light? Light is what? It is uh, some kanti. Uh, even if you go into physics, it cannot, ha- it cannot uh, sustain or uphold a flying helicopter. Uh, so, the li- we used to think like that. The light has the flying helicopter. Come on, light doesn't have the flying helicopter in it. So, you, you tell me where is this flying helicopter? Uh, so, you have to say only one thing. It is in myself. You are the locus of that flying helicopter. So, that means that uh, uh, that, that consciousness, which you are a conscious being. You are not a bag of bones and flesh. You are a conscious being. And uh, you are the substratum in which a flying helicopter is seen. So, that is first step. I am the locus or I am the space, the space of consciousness in which there is the consciousness of a flying helicopter. So, I am conscious of a flying helicopter. And so, the flying helicopter is shining in the consciousness which I am. Now, the point is, the consciousness is the locus, really the substantive. The word locus is valid only when uh, that thing is really sitting there. The cup is located on the table. The cup is really sitting on the table. But uh, Raju Sarpa, you don't use the word locus. You may use. You may use. as long as You know it and you use it. It's okay. But uh, it will be better. You use. Uh, that's why Shankara never uses Adhara. He doesn't say Adhara. He says Adhishthana. Adhara is, uh, the cup is located on the uh, table, that is the Adhara. But there also Saptame Vipati is common for both. But the word Adhara is used, Adhara Adheya. But here it is not Adhara Adheya. It is Adhishthana and Adhyaropa. Adhi, Adhi, Adhi means Upadi. So, on which you superimpose, it is Adhishthana. Sthiti, it is, and then you superimpose something on it. Adhi, Upadi, Adhishthana. And whatever you are superimposing, that is Adhi Aropa, Adhyaropa. So, this is the language that is used. And if you bring it into English, you may have to say substratum uh, and the superimposition. They seem to be working well. Therefore, so the consciousness which I am is the Adhishthana for the appearance. Once you say Adhishthana, you cannot say the word anymore. You cannot use the language of Adhara. But the, the table is the Adhara on which the cup is sitting. Cup, is, cup becomes Adheya. That language you cannot use anymore because cup is on the table. Whereas here, nothing is. Whatever appears only, appears only. There is nothing is. There is no is at all uh, in the context of appearance. Therefore, you have to say <coughs> the, appear, the, the movie or the flying helicopter is an appearance on the substratum of the conscious being that I am. You have to say that. Once, this is the conclusion that you should reach when you watch a movie. Now the point is, what is true to the movie is true to the Jagat. That is the point. So Jagat Drishyam, that's why, you see, <coughs> Tartikas say Jagat Karyam. And therefore Karana. Ishwara is the Karana. But Ishwara alone will not be enough. Because uh, you look at any Karana, you look at any Karana, uh, the, the individual is not enough. Some material is also required. Therefore Paramanus. <coughs> so, that is how the Tartikas look at it. Because for them, Jagat Asti, not even Asti, Jayate. Jagat Jayate. It is born and therefore you need a cause, not even one cause or two causes you need. 
एक पिता माता टू कासेस यू नीड सो सिमिलरली द द पॉट मेकर एंड द क्ले टू कासेस सो दिस इज हाउ तार्किक आस लुक एट इट वेर एज वेदांत से जगत न जायते जगत न अस्ति जगत दृश्यते फ्लाइंग हेलीकॉप्टर हेलीकॉप्टर इज ने इधर फ्लाइंग नार सिटिंग नार फ्लोटिंग नथिंग ऑफ दोस काइंड इट इज ओनली अपियरिंग सिमिलरली जगत दृश्यते अंड दत दृश्य नाउ वाट इज इट दट बाइंड यू दृश्य इज बाइंडिंग अंड इज दट दृश्य रियल इट इज नॉट रियल नॉट एट ऑल रियल and then uh, what am i i am the one who is superimposing a, a drishya jagat a, a seeming world upon myself the conscious being that i am that is what i am doing and then i suffer this is very practical i imagine an enemy and suffer i imagine a, a, an individual as my but my me my in syndrome my person this is this is like uh, some of these syndromes are there like uh, um, in uh, medical literature these syndromes are there quite often they are talked about so so a scientist discovered the disease now the disease is known after his name there are many such syndromes can you tell one of them uh, parkinson's syndrome so he is suffering from parkinson's syndrome means there is some real suffering going on similarly this me mine syndrome yeah. real it is something like parkinson's syndrome there are many such syndromes and this is a, a very important syndrome so he is my son or my brother or my this my dad you see going and doing some service is not the issue that we are talking about we are talking about the suffering of the individual so we are not talking about what is the duty what we have to do what we should not do or what we have done what else you have to do that is the different point in fact it is indeed said encouraged that you should do all that you have to and be loving and all that don't expect anything don't demand anything just to do so all that is uh, there therefore that is not the issue so we should not confuse issues like that suppose uh, they, because it is always confused like that so you you confuse uh, as long as you confuse things like that mix up things like that nothing gets settled suppose i say me mind syndrome so swami ji we are family members so should we not take care of our kids that is not the point at all that is besides the point you are confusing one with the other i am not talking of that part of it in fact what i am talking if you know you will be able to do that part better that's why i always it is my refrain in the class a family life and a practice of an honest profession is not an obstacle for realization of the self and so therefore that way we should not confuse we are talking of the suffering that is experienced by the individual due to a notion that he has developed about these things so when you say he is my son so and give a name to it this uh, attachment makes us suffer and uh, that attachment is part of the drishya and it is utterly unreal and you know that the attachment is false that moment you become free and in that freedom you will be able to help even better that guy he will be free also when i become free he will become free because sometimes they say the attachment makes the other person suffer also he cannot protest and all that therefore so the point is point is that drushya so the the world the samsara that is experienced by us is entirely a mistake on our part it is not created by anybody else even you have not created it because it is it doesn't exist it is only an appearance and so the appearance is such a thing as long as you see it it appears to be there appears to be real the moment you stop seeing it what i mean i, I don't mean closing the eyes what i mean is 
you stop seeing it means you now see clearly that there is no snake that is what is meant by not seeing it anymore you stop seeing it it just vanishes it is just a because it was never there so this vision drishya atyanta abhava bodha this vision without this without this as a precondition there is nothing like atma sakshatkara that is what he is saying because you are not going to uh, you are not going to know atman you can only be atman and uh, so there is kartru karma virodha i know atman i the subject atman is the object karta karma knowing is the action action or the verb so this i cannot become the object and the object cannot become the subject that is kartru karma virodha therefore i know myself is technically wrong you can say that knowing a few things correctly for the purpose of communication or in a as an expression you can say it i am not uh, insisting on semantics of it so what i mean is i can only be myself because knowing demands that what you know is the other that is what knowing demands and therefore strictly speaking i cannot know myself i can only be myself but still in that sense you can say there is no knowing the self there is only being the self this is what we all should know in that sense you can use the word atma jnanam uh, so uh, therefore uh, so then bodha is strictly knowing what all i am not that is the bodha and that bodha is a precondition for the atma sakshatkara and uh, this is bodha atma sakshatkara swais atma bodha at any time by any person without negating the superimposition of a, a phenomenal world upon oneself thereby you see it, it all goes like this you you are you are watching a movie now uh, uh, now as long as the movie is there and you are relating to the movie you have already defined a status for yourself the status is uh, you are a customer in the movie theater minimum that is minimum status for the two and half hours you are a customer there that's why they they say also keep the ticket to stop till the end of the show because so that your status is uh, well established but it, it, it can be a little more than that you are the one who is getting entertained you need entertainment and you are getting entertained that is an additional status and then uh, in an indian context especially south indian context you could as well be a fan of that hero not only that you may be secretary of the local unit of the fans club <laughs> all those things you can be this is how we are caught in the samsara we have become secretaries of the fans of the samsara and that is a, so that is what is our problem therefore when so when there is a phenomenal world but you take the phenomenal world as something solid sitting there and so that 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 misconception about the world it brings in a corresponding misconception about yourself that is the problem it is not that okay i have seen a serpent in the place of a rope i made a mistake okay what what the problem are bhai all problem is there because you are the one who is frightened of the serpents and therefore the freedom from a misconception about oneself which is the atma sakshatkara is a, uh, is the same as or is synonymous with understanding clearly that the world as it is experienced is unreal therefore whosoever it may be kenachin nama at any time 
may be it is in the Krita Yuga or may be in the Treta Yuga, any Yuga. Without calling the bluff of this world, without clearly understanding that what is called samsara is only a superimposition, it is only an appearance, it's drishya, it is not real. Without this realization, there is nothing like svabodha in anybody's life at any time. Ataha anvishyatam. Therefore, you search for the truth. So, uh, you, you search, you, you, uh, uh, you contemplate. This uh, Vedanta is not like uh, a subject matter which is all well settled already and it's only a matter of conveying that information to a student. It is not like that. You see, Newton's laws are there, well settled. At least in that context they are well settled. And so now the job is for the teacher to convey that information correctly to the students and the student should correctly grasp it. The job is done now. Vedanta is not like that. You have to investigate inquire and uh, examine and then uh, then uh, study, contemplate and come to know all in yourself. Ataha anvishyatam. Therefore, start that process. Next verse. Sacheha sambhavatyeha sambhavatyeva tadartha midamatatam Shastrama karna yasi chet Tatvamaps yasi nanyatha Sacheha sambhavatyeva Saha means bodhaha, svabodhaha Svabodhaha means Atma Sakshatkara Iha Sambhavatyeva Ihaiva Sambhavati That is possible in this life alone Means this human birth In this human birth alone it is possible Suppose uh, a person makes a lot of punya And becomes a devata As a devata he is, uh, he is very likely That he will not know the truth of the self Because in Devaloka there is a, that uh, ambience of bhoga, there is a bhoga bhumi. So, once you go to Devaloka, you will be busy with bhogas. And all the people around you will be equally busy or even more busy with bhogas. And therefore, when you are all busy, uh, so the question of uh, understanding the Vedanta, etc. doesn't uh, occur. The other day, I found myself in what is called a gala dinner. Gala dinner. The word gala I did not know. So first time I have had that, that then I, I, I they told me at four o'clock, Swamiji, this evening your talk is yes, I noted at seven thirty I have to give a talk. Uh, that is true. Uh, that is the part of the gala dinner. What do you mean by gala dinner? You give me some dinner and uh, some little dinner, I won't take a heavy dinner, some simple dinner you give me. I either you can give it before the uh, class or after the class, preferably after the class and uh, my class will be, uh, my, I will talk at 7.30 No Swamiji, you got it all wrong It is a gala dinner Means what? Means all will be sitting around uh, the tables, round tables and you will go to the dais and you will speak I will not speak like that No, no, you, that is the program Anyway, I went to Houston all the way from here to attend the program Therefore, uh, I spoke to them and uh, so I was not very comfortable because uh, they are all sitting around tables and uh, I am standing there at the mic and they all say, sit like this, look at me like that table is here and they look at me like that and in the hand something is there so they are munching it and look at it. <laughs> and now I have to teach what is Atma or what is Dharma Dharma I have to teach about Dharma what is human uh, goal in life <laughs> So, this is like Swarga. That, that is not the place for any such a serious thing. Therefore, as a Devata, the question of knowing Atma etc. doesn't arise. And, uh, and uh, therefore, human birth is the best birth suited for that. Adhikari Shariram, well known point. Sacha iha sambhavatyeva. Therefore, you have to strive for that knowledge here itself. Tadartha midam atatam. And this life. Is given to us only for that purpose. It is said like that. 
very interestingly um, so okay this life uh, such a long life is given atatam means long spread over years uh, so uh, this is given for that purpose you see uh, there was a context i don't remember exactly uh, so bhagwan was asked why am i may, uh, why am i born here in this uh, world then bhagwan says so that you can reach me suppose instead of taking birth as a human being Uh, the person takes the individual takes birth as a devata. The chance of reaching Ishvara is not there, or as an animal, etc. Therefore, birth as a human being is a, a meant for reaching Ishvara. That is the purpose. Very interesting answer. So we say, "Pradhan karma is there, this karma is there, that karma is there, this bhoga." That's why we are born. But Bhagwan says, "You are born as a human being to reach me." So that is the purpose. There is no other purpose. तदर्थम इदम आततम देयरफॉर व्हाट वी हैव टू डू श्रवणम सो शास्त्रम आकर्णयसि चेत सो डू श्रवणम सो शास्त्र शास्त्र इज उपनिषद उपनिषद इज बेसिकली उपनिषद इज दी शास्त्र शास्त्र योनित्वात इज दी सूत्रम सो शमसति इति शास्त्रम वाट टीचेस अबाउट द आत्मा दैट इज दी शास्त्र दैट इज दी उपनिषद but then gita and uh, some text like yoga vasistha etc text related to that they are the shastra and uh, so only preferably you choose such a text suppose you choose a text like bhagavatam there uh, the shastra is uh, intermingled with a lot of uh, mythology and so you have to find out the significance of that mythology mythological story and at the same time the story is given less importance in spite of its significance and then the the shastra is there the shamsanam is there and that we have to highlight whereas in a text like yoga vasistha so what you have to uh, pick up is more and what you have to uh, give less importance is less so like that suppose you take uh, some other uh, text uh, um uh, where it is entirely mythological text so some text like that you take some upasana or karma type kind of text. suppose you take apastamba grihya sutra there you don't find any vedanta or any such thing only karma kanda etc you will find therefore you have to the word shastra doesn't cover everything and uh, you have to pick and choose and arrive at the correct text and that you have to do shravanam shastra makarna yasiket so tatvam you have to listen to the tatva how long yavat tatva nirnayam iti seshaha so till you gain the knowledge of the tatva you have to listen to it so this is all said like that but uh, there are a few more points about it uh, any idea that we just keep on listening and uh, it will happen so just waiting for this uh, self realization to happen and it will happen in the future it is not in the present and so what all we have to do is keep on listening this is not i am not very keen about i am not sure about uh, that way it will happen uh, so in fact i would also i would love to ask this question why did it not happen till now that kind of a question i prefer to ask uh, because uh, that becomes a, a complacency if not a, if not a self deception uh, so i would prefer to be ask the question why why did not i get till now why did not i gain the atmajnana last week what is the problem that is the better way so otherwise it becomes a complacency and it becomes like we are all members of a particular kind of club a different kind of club not like a golf club or some other club another fraternity like sports car driving people are there it's a fraternity Uh, sports car driving people or uh, these motorcycle driving people so uh, that is a fraternity they are very peculiar uh, fraternity they have a different hairstyle and a different dress and their motorcycles their bags everything is different they are a fraternity and occasionally they meet at a place and uh, that place has its own ambiance very unique ambiance and uh, so uh, that, that is a club and so we are another club 
And so, how long they will be in that fraternity? How long? We will be in it. There is no longer any such thing. So, that doesn't help. So, we have to come out, we, we, we should not think that is a Shravanam, one aspect of Shravanam, because Shravanam has come, therefore, I am saying a few things. Uh, then, uh, that is the negative aspect of it, we should uh, notice it. Then, uh, coming to the positive aspect of Shravanam, Shravanam is not hearing. It is not just listening. That becomes a Pratyaksha Pramana, rather than becomes Shraddha Pramana. So, Shravanam is very well defined, Shastra Nishchaya Nukulaha, Tatpariya Nishchaya Nukulo Vyaparaha. Means, what is the Shastra is there? You listen to the exposition of a thing that is written in the book. Yeah, you listen to the expounding of a book. That is what you do. But, uh, listening to the expounding of a book by a, by, a Mah- by a Mahatma or by a person, uh, that in itself doesn't make it Shravanam. You have listened to, alright. But what you have listened to, you have to uh, understand it deeply within. And now, it is your knowledge. It is not what Yoga Vasistha says, it is not what Sri Krishna says, it is not what Upanishads say, it is not what some Guru Mahatma says, it is what I am saying. Then it is my knowledge. Generally, people are experts in quoting. They quote. Suppose I quote from Gita, so I quote from Upanishads. Somebody told me, Swamiji, you quote from Upanishads quite well. This is, this is somebody, when I went to Kakinada, he told me, you quote from Upanishads very well. I told him, you are quoting from various Kavyas extremely well. He quotes from Kavyas very well, from Kalidasa, from Telugu Kavyas, all kinds of Kavyas of Sanskrit and Telugu, they are at, a, at his fingertips and he can quote them quite well. I told him, you quote quite well. Uh, so, so that doesn't make anything. So it is not about quoting quite well from texts. That is not the point. That is not Shravanam. Suppose you say, oh, he is quoting quite well from Upanishads, he has done a lot of Shravanam. That is not the point. In fact, that is all about missing the point. So, unless some of, because some complacency has to be removed, unless you remove some of the, there is a lot more about Shravanam. In briefly I am putting it. So, that complacency, uh, if it happens, so that means uh, we have reached a plateau and now uh, there is, unless there is some serious jump start, so the person continues uh, at the plateau. In fact, you come across many people who have reached a plateau. They, they won't grow any further. In fact, they, they may uh, become more and more like a club members, more and more, more of it. Uh, and uh, they will be even uh, putting in their energies in that direction, making the club bigger or making the club strong. It's all club-like activity. Uh, it is not a disaster. I am a bit fortunate, please don't mind my say. I am a crazy guy. I say my things and I take a little food and walk away. So you take the right ones from what I said. Eh? Uh, so, that is not Shravanam. Uh, so, uh, Shravanam is a very serious thing. Uh, like, uh, once, uh, uh, I tell you my personal experience, I will tell you, please don't mind my saying it. There is a book called Shastra Deepika, uh, not Shastra Deepika, Bhatta Deepika. Uh, so, uh, Bhatta Deepika means Kumar Lavatta. Kumar Lavatta is teaching uh, Vartika and uh, uh, Karma Mimamsa. So I am, I, I am studying it. And uh, so when Yajna is, the, the, the Mimamsa means it is all about the performance of various rituals. Like this Yajna, Agni Shomi is there, Agni Shomi Yaga is there. In this Yaga, so you offer an oblation uh, to twin devatas, Agni and the Soma. So what kind of oblation it is, when it should be offered. This Agni Shomi Yaga should be performed after uh, Indra Yaga or before Indra Yaga. So like that, uh, the same discussion, which is there in a small way in a b- basic text, it is there in a more, much more big way. 
and i am discussing it then suddenly uh, i asked my father what am i doing he said yeah you are studying mimamsa but the guy is a serious text advanced text of mimamsa you are studying that is what you are doing why am i doing this why what do you mean by that i am not sure i will be doing any of these karmas in my life yeah that is true then why am i reading it yeah i i agree with your question also you think about it if you want to read it you read for this scholarship sake you have to read there is no other purpose uh, in all probability you will not be doing any of those karmas i said i will think about it so i did not continue study of it then uh, i asked so what shall i study he said you study yoga darshanam then i studied patanjali yoga darshanam i stopped bhata deepika and studied yoga darshanam and having studied yoga darshanam i went to a yoga school in kanyakumari and sat there for a month and then i made another visit and sat for another 2 3 weeks and i practiced some yoga because again studying the yoga darshanam is not the point you have to practice it so uh, we have to do some such thing the otherwise uh, it doesn't make much sense some sense it will make definitely we are better informed about some of the wonderful things in the world uh, that is a great privilege and we can even talk some of these things about atma and all that that is also equally great privilege so i am not belittling any of that but what i am saying is uh, it may not be of great use uh, sometimes uh, Uh, it becomes uh, uh, a torturing of a text uh, so tatva masi what does it mean uh, so bhagat tyag lakshana like that you go on uh, talking uh, it's a tortuous uh, effort uh, in fact i become i am torturing myself and i am torturing the sentence also break it into pieces and pieces and pieces and uh, so then derive at something about it so all this effort uh, Uh, in a way it has some relevance obviously it has uh, uh, a value to it uh, but only when uh, it has taken uh, at least a little forward not uh, just dropping it there uh, therefore uh, uh, shravanam should take us uh, towards a uh, lot more than towards a uh, next stage uh, of uh, uh, somehow uh, converting what uh, the thoughts that we have picked up due through shravanam they have to be converted into living thoughts that has to happen uh, without that uh, just uh, uh, listening to the shastra in a routine way uh, or in a mechanical or repetitive way is not of great help therefore i have to say that otherwise uh, what happens you know till you know you should listen and so that gives a, a very nice escape route to the people okay we will listen and uh, there is no hurry so what happens suppose my age is 50 okay still long life is there let us continue listening suppose uh, that way it feels suppose it is 60 the same way it appears suppose it is 70 even then uh, that hurry you don't feel a uh, still long time is there atmajnanam is what we are listening since long anyway and so we will continue suppose you are 80 even then you don't feel that uh, uh, that a uh, hurry uh, that a uh, sense of uh, doing it something about it so that has one has to feel it uh, that's why i am saying that it is not just about uh, listening one text of what what text and also it is not about a multitude of texts uh, so it is uh, about uh, looking within and searching within and uh, uh, and uh, uh, one has to uh, put oneself into a, a position where he can see the truth so that has to be done so in that sense the word shravanam has to be understood next verse 
ஜகத்ரமோயம் திருஷ்யோபி நாஸ்தே வேத்தியனுபூயோம் நாமுனானகாவணம் இஸ் ஜஸ்ட் நாட் லிசனிங் டு ஃபியூ திங்ஸ் சம்படி சேட் definitely not like purana shravana in purana shravana there is a different that is a different context there what happens there is a thing called gunanuvadaha means you just listen shri krishna's playful uh, playful deeds so shri krishna was uh, lying in the cradle uh, looking up uh, with a smile on his face then he suddenly sees putana she arrived there so like that uh, it is a very interesting story uh, then uh, depending upon the one who teaches who who describes the story it could be interesting and even absorbing even though we know the basic details of the story it could still be absorbing and then uh, it can even invoke the sense of devotion to ishvara this is called gunanuvadaha so that may be a kind of fulfillment in itself once you have done uh, once you have listened to one hour uh, shri krishna balya leelas they are all called leelas one hour you have listened to leelas now what should you do what what else, what practice you have to do there is no practice so you may as well come tomorrow again and listen to the leelas for one more hour so it, in itself it is a, a practice listening itself is a practice in it and in itself it is a fulfillment so after listening uh, something else is there i have to reach that something else that kind of a situation you don't find in it and the bhakti is also even bhakti one has to cultivate so even listening to the gunanuvada the description of ishwara's glory and ishwara's attributes and exploits and leelas etc just listening and listening and listening so that brings in that cultivates bhakti so that situation is slightly different this is also similar to that but not exactly the same here uh, just listening alone is not it doesn't um, make it complete uh, this point was well um, well made by shankara uh, in uh, maitri brahmanam where this shravanam is mandated shrotavyo mantavyo nididhyasita vyah there itself he makes it very clear that shrotavya means shravanam kartavya shravana alone is not sufficient and there is obviously something more that has to follow shravanam so he makes that very clear anyway so uh, this vicharena i said all those things when i saw the word vicharena so it is really not a shravanam alone it is atma vicharaha tato brahma jignasa brahma shravanam kartavyam no it is not said like that brahma vicharah kartavya jignasa pavasya vicharaha ityartha so the word jignasa means vichara so it is not just a shravanam alone it is vichara when it comes to purana there is nothing like purana vichara that is, that is academics and all that it is purana shravanam whereas brahma shravanam no vedanta shravanam no it is there but not enough vedanta vicharaha so amuna vicharena so anagha o blemishless one like that valmiki is saying to bharadvaja so amuna vicharena so pursuing this vichara uh so the the inquiry the investigation uh, the exploration you see this is a very peculiar journey normally in all other journeys including the worldly journeys the journeys that we do in this world uh, and then uh, the still the religious journey is there so we worship god etc we t- take it as a journey in itself a religious pursuit and then uh, some upasana is there so uh, upasana is obviously a journey suppose this purasharana at 12 lakhs times i have to do this mantra japam that is a journey in itself so all these journeys are there 
sometimes it is a, a literal journey like going to Kashi, Varanasi. Sometimes it is a kind of a figurative journey like a, a reaching a particular goal which you set for yourself uh, as a, about uh, worshipping Ishwara etc. They are, they are journeys and this is also a journey. We hear uh, the goal is uh, uh, gaining the Atma Jnana. In all other journeys the goal is important and the path is only uh, important to the extent that it takes you to the goal. Whereas in Vedanta, uh, there is no goal. The way it is uh, appreciated in the other context, you do not have a goal. Because you are the goal. You are the goal means there is no real goal it yartha. Because you are not away from you. Generally goal must be away from you. You are the goal means what? There is no goal at all. That's why it is a journey in the form of exploring uh, without a goal. It is an exploration without a goal. And uh, it is a journey uh, without a path. Anadvagaha adhosu parayishnavaha. The Shruti also recognizes all these things quite well. Uh, so, um, you, you don't travel on a path, yet you reach the end of the path. Adhosu parayishnavaha. And also journey implies a time. Any journey implies a time. Even the figurative journey of a religious pursuit implies a time. Whereas here, there is no time involved. It is a timeless journey in a pathless land to a goalless uh, goal. That kind of a journey it is. That's why here, uh, the entire emphasis is on exploration only. Brahma vichara kattavyaha. That's all. Not Brahma Jnana, it is Brahma Jnana, it is not Brahma Jnana, Athato Brahma Jnana, it is not. Because Brahma Jnana becomes a goal then. It is not like that. It is Brahma Vichara Kattavya. You explore. So you constantly explore. And as you explore, you will discover newer and newer horizons of your own self. That is the thing it is. And uh, Atma has infinite expressions. Till today, millions of Mahatmas have explored. And uh, sometimes they remain silent, sometimes they were uh, expressive, all those things happened. Today uh, comes another guy and he starts exploring. And yet, the exploration can continue. Because we are exploring the infinite. We are exploring the open spaces. Suppose you want to explore open spaces. When will it end? Where will it end? It will never end. It will not end. You know why? Because exploration is the goal. It is the goal. And uh, so that's, that is the, you continue to explore. Uh, so anyway, amuna vicharena. And also this exploration is not painful. In the world, every journey is painful, however comfortable it is. In the religious uh, context, the journey, the goal, etc., it involves lot of effort and lot of strain. There is no issue about it. But one is advised to go through all that because that prepares the person well. But here, in this exploration, there is no khaeda, there is no distress, there is no stress even. No khaeda. Because you are exploring your Swarupa. And Atma is the only thing that is loved and lovable in this entire creation. Nothing else is loved. Nothing else is lovable in itself. Putraf Priyaha. So, Atmanah Kamaya Putraf Priyaha. Atmanah Kamaya uh, dara Priya Priyaha Atmanah Kamaya Patihi Priyaha Like that uh, the Nibhadaranyaka, the Maitreyi Brahmanam only the father, the father, mother, brother, uh, sister and the wife, husband all these relationships are the, indeed the love that is associated with all these relationships is indeed a reflected love the, the love for the self not love, not a self love it is love of the self, not self-love. Self-love is all silly, it is selfishness. It is the love of the self. 
true self. Self-love means I love my body, I love my mind, I love my emotions, I love my ego. That is the self-love. No. Love of the self. So, um, therefore, th- that is the truth. Therefore, uh, there is no khedha involved in it. That's why even meditation, one should not be under the impression that meditation is a, a self-imposed discipline or imposition uh, that I put upon myself. It is not like that. Meditation is an exploration into the unknown uh, and uh, into, it is a free transport into your own Swarupa. Suppose Maunam. Maunam, in Gita Maunam is there. It is not in the context of Vachitantapaha. This is a very interesting thing. This I point out whenever I remember Kaika, Tapaha, Vachikam. And then manasam. Suppose you take maunam, silence. Where will you put it? Normally you would like to put it as vachikam. It is a tapas. Okay. In tapas is it kaika? Oh, maunam is not kaika. Uh, so, okay, vachika. It is vachika. It is not even vachika. You know, because when you speak, that is vachikam tapaha. Not when you don't speak. So, then if I don't speak, what is that? So when you don't speak, eventually that leads to an inner silence, therefore it is put under the category of manasam tapaha. Maunam atma vinigraha. Atma is manaha. Therefore, restrain, nigraha is restraining. Restrain the mind. Hold it back. Maintain that inner silence. That is the tapas. Therefore, in maunam what is the pain? Suppose you speak for an hour, your uh, throats, uh, the, uh, that, uh, the whatever, uh, the swarape uh, tika they call it. So the voice box, uh, so that is overused, uh, that causes uh, some suffering, uh, some, uh, diffi- di- 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 some difficulty it causes. But suppose, uh, Swamiji, you don't need to speak, you come and uh, we leave you alone, you sit in the sofa, you read a book if you wish, otherwise you do meditate at the right time, we will give you bhiksha and afterwards you can go your way means, uh, what is the khedha in it? There is no khedha, but the, it is the human mind. Human mind says, oh my goodness, that is very difficult because there is nobody to speak to, there is uh, no, nothing else to do and so how can I spend the time? So people uh, they are uh, very much disturbed when uh, they cannot speak and they cannot do. So that means what? I am, I am is defined by uh, doing and speaking. I am is sustained by doing and speaking. What a misconception it is. <coughs> because the fact is, uh, speaking is not you, doing is not you. But my sense of inner self, I am, that is the sense of inner self, that sense of inner self is uh, mistakenly connected to doing and speaking. But if you know the truth, yourself as the being, not doing associated with it, and speech is also doing, thinking is also doing, Thinking is doing. So Sri Krishna gave a list of karmas. Pralapan visrijan gurunhan unmishan nimishan api, like that. If you look at that list, even thinking is a karma. Speaking is a karma. And uh, these karmas, they guna guneshu vartante. That is how he concludes the list, I suppose. So, all this is the play of gunas play of gunas. Like uh, elders are uh, busy with their uh, pursuit, whereas children are uh, playing among themselves. All these children are there, they must be there somewhere, mm-hmm. they are doing something. Guna Gunesh Vartante. Some toys are given to them and the children are playing with the toys and the toys are engaged by the children. The toys engage the children and the children play with the toys. Guna Gunesh Vartante. Similarly, the body-mind and the speech and the organs, they are gunaha, 
గుణేషు వర్తంతే రాజ్ అయాం నాట్ ఇన్ గుణాస్ ఐఆమ్ సంథింగ్ విచ్ ఈస్ విచ్ కాన్సెన్స్ ది గుణాస్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ ది ఖేదా ఇన్ ఇట్ దర్ ఇస్ నో ఖేదా దే ఫోర్ సో దిస్ ఆత్మ విచార ఇట్ ఈస్ అఖేదా ఇన్ ఫ్యాక్ట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ పుటింగ్ అన్ ఎండ్ టు ఆల్ ది ఖేదా దెర్ ఇస్ నో ఖేదా ఖేదా ఇస్ ది స్ట్రెస్ ఇన్వాల్వ్డ్ ఇన్ ఇట్ దర్ ఫోర్ హే హే భరద్వాజ యూ పర్షూ దిస్ ఎక్స్ప్లోరేషన్ ఆఫ్ ది సెల్ఫ్ అండ్ బట్ when you pursue the exploration of the self uh, you can uh, uh, really really appreciate in very clear terms that this jagat brahmaha the delusion called jagat so here uh, the the opposition is not to pratiti drushyopi pratiti is accepted drushyopi it is it appears it appears you see one may say it appears the same for us all this argument is met therefore it must be real some kind of a reality is attributed so this argument is met squarely in two ways one yes it appears the same for all let us accept yet it is not real that is one way to meet the argument the second argument also you are assuming that it appears the same for all you are assuming it doesn't appear the same for all uh, so what appears to me is never the same as this that appears to you even this table the way it appears to me is not the same as the way it appears to you each person sees his own version of the table and then uh, th- th- there is a big discussion about it what is the when we use the word table i say table and you all understand the table so what i am trying to convey is uh, is known to you therefore it must be the same no when i say table it is my version of the table which is not the same as your version of the table but still the communication is made possible because the table word is understood as a kind of an average of all our versions it is like hybridization hybrid orbitals between carbon and hydrogen what hybridization there is no, it is a it's a theoretical model which just explains the facts that are observed the carbon hydrogen bond in methane is very strong whereas in ethylene it is not that strong in acetylene it is even more weak so what could be the reason so hybridization sp3 sp2 sp1 so sp3 there is some you know hybridization or any such thing some theoretical model it serves the purpose it explains the things very well and it helps to make some more research also same way the word table is a, it is serving a purpose the communication is happening we are all using it more or less for the same purpose that doesn't prove that my version of the table is same as your version of the table i tell you that's why uh, you, you may not uh, conclude that the table is a common thing there is nothing common therefore jagat brahmaha so what i was saying the pratiti means the appearance or uh, which is same as experience the word experience is same as appearance it appears to you that is it you experience it one and the same so the pratiti the appearance of the experience of the world is not denied the, the opposition is not for the pratiti in fact the pratiti is there some kind of pratiti it may not coincide with uh, for everybody but it is there is a pratiti generally we are all experiencing there is a jagat this pratiti in spite of being a pratiti drishya drishya means pratiti appearance or experience still it is not real jagat brahmo yam it is a brahma it is something like three people are looking at a rope one person says it is a serpent the other person says it is a garland mala the other person says it is a crooked a crooked piece of wood a stick a crooked piece of stick 
So, all the three are in the same Brahma. Similarly, a family person has a one kind of, he says something about the world, and a Brahmachari, he says, you see, suppose there is a Brahmachari in the university, he has a one world vision. The same guy, he finishes his university education, at some point he concludes it and gets married to a young lady, and now he has a child or two, now his world vision is never the same, is altogether different. It is like early one person is seeing serpent, another person is seeing mala, something like that. And uh, when you are happy, when you are physically healthy, and uh, uh, when you are, uh, your pocket is uh, uh, having enough money, and uh, your stomach is, uh, is filled to a reasonable extent, and the pocket is uh, there, and uh, physically healthy, and your beloved is uh, standing by your side. That is one, then you look at the world. What is wrong? One person told me, really, he was in Pune, and so unexpectedly, what is wrong with the world, Visham? What is wrong with the world? Why are you going against this world with uh, all your, uh, uh, all your strength? What is wrong with it? Then I, I asked him, what are you doing? I am working as an engineer in uh, Pune. Pune is a hub for electronics things. I am working as an engineer. And when were you married? Only six months back. <laughs> and then where do you live? In a nice apartment I live. Ah, wow, okay, I understand. <laughs> so that is the world we come. Suppose a millionaire is there. He is having, a, this is my favorite uh, illustration. He is having a world vision. He is a businessman. Uh, yeah, that business, I will think about it. If I like it, if I am convinced, I may purchase it. Otherwise, I don't care. A millionaire, a rich man's arrogance. And then he gets a stomach pain. <laughs> stomach pain. Nothing bigger than that. Now his world vision is not the same anymore. A dip in the stock market is enough to alter the world vision all the way, top seat and we ho jata hai. So, the Jagat Dhamaha, uh, so it is a Drishyopi. Therefore, everybody has a world vision. So, this world vision is never the same. But still, you can uh, figure out some commonality, some common points you can figure out. Um, uh, even then, uh, the situation is not altered. In spite of some common elements that we can all agree about the world, in spite of that common elements, still it is a very subjective world, it is an entirely a projection of the mind. So, Jagad Brahmoyam Drushyopi. So, what do you want to say? You see, you can say so many things, you can say so many things. Uh, so, you have a proverb in uh, Telugu. So, Karra Veradadu Pamu Savadu means uh, the stick with you with which you want to beat the snake the stick won't break the snake won't die so you can uh, go on playing with it like that but not in yoga vasishtha nastyeva ite anubhuyate the stick breaks and the serpent also dies both will happen in one stroke give a stroke to it the stick is gone and the serpent is also gone nastyeva it just doesn't exist. That's why we never put the word is before that. We say the world appears. Never world is. So, we don't say, suppose in a given framing of the sentence, you are pushed to say the is only, like existence of the world. So, suppose you are pushed to say that. So, immediately, they become alert and say, seeming existence of the world. Not existence of the world, seeming existence of the world. And uh, uh, I tell you, this is very practical also. So, I, I say like that because uh, I can, I, I, I have a feeling that there can be some resistance here and there. For various reasons. People think that they know. That could be reason enough to resist. So, uh, therefore, uh, to, to address that kind of a resistance, I say this. So, 
even when you use the word existence you put seeming there seeming existence never ever say the exist world exists or the world is because in saying so uh, you are making things more difficult for you and uh, this is not even uh, some speculation or some utopian philosophy it is very practical there cannot be anything more practical than this you know why because the truth is the only practical thing in this world and in this life so when you face a crisis or an unfavorable situation you just a step behind take a step back don't become straight away disturbed and unhappy and uh, uh, so perturbed so you take one step back and try to see the situation which is developing which has developed or which is developing uh, which is in a particular stage of development so the situation is it real is it real is it not a dream like so explore don't conclude even nast yeva acharya concludes valmiki concludes nast yeva eva not at all there so you may not even conclude you can just explore is it real should i be perturbed by that so why not just be a witness to that let it develop uh, so it develops this way it's okay so what what is what is uh, the reality of it how many times uh, we have been uh, uh, we have been defeated in life how many times uh, we have seen uh, the adversities should we not did we not come out of all those adversities in a way unscathed i am what i am today in spite of so many adversities earlier same way one more adversity what what will happen what about all those adversities at that time they looked so demanding and so overwhelming but eventually they proved to be like passing phases passing clouds they came and went they proved to be that this adversity is it any different from that so this kind of a doubting the reality of the world doubting people doubt atma they don't doubt the world that is the problem they doubt atma is there an atma is it real like that they doubt is there a world is it real that is where you have to doubt you see doubting is a philosophy it is called solopsis is it so did you not hear solopsis do you have a where is our manoj uh, you you check the dictionary solopsis you have a dictionary okay s o l o p s i s so and of course uh, Uh, the french philosopher descartes he is called uh, he is a philosopher of doubt this is not a samshyatma is don't put it like that this is a philosophy you have to doubt the world you have to doubt it take it for granted and as if it is real is wrong so uh, suppose uh, young man is there he is my son okay so i have to do something about it okay do it so what is meant by this son who is who some that is called solopsis this is that is philosophy you see we mix up everything and uh, therefore you cannot make out what is philosophy and what is uh, upasana and what is karmakanda all is mixed up into a kichdi in philosophy uh, it is in a different dimension altogether what is kya kya duniya hai ye what is this world like that you have to doubt that you have to explore what is the reality of all these uh, events and incidents and all that so this is jagat bhramoyan drushyopi nastyeva okay there is a word called solipsism s o l i p s i s m like theory that self is all that exists or can be known Oh. Okay, where I got this notion? Okay. Ah, and any more meanings? 
Uh, we, we will look at it. <laughs> okay, we will look into it. Uh, so, anyway, that came somewhat close, uh, but that is not the point that I was trying to make. Maybe there is another meaning, it's kind of the same, but it says the position that knowledge of anything outside one's own specific mind is unjustified. My God. Mm-hmm. I got a word, a good word. <laughs> <laughs> So, here is that only the self exists, ah. or it can be proved to exist, ah. that is the philosophical Okay. And uh, another dimension he added, uh, anything outside, uh, supposed to be outside, it is uh, doubted. Uh, we don't uh, sanction it any reality. Of course, uh, the concluding position is given as the meaning. Concluding position just doesn't exist. But I thought it is uh, an exploration. So, Nastyeva. The Jagat Brahmoyam Nastyeva. Uh, so, you see, we say all the time, the Jagat is a dreamlike. And so, when you, in, in a, such, a, in a, such a, an atmosphere that has a, one kind of a ring, whereas, uh, if you can bring it, when you are facing a real predicament in life, a real crisis you are facing. Uh, so at that time, if you can say that, that makes a huge difference in handling the crisis, the so-called crisis. Kya hota hai? It's all right. It's all a mitya anyway. So, Nasik Jeva, like uh, just one illustration, finishes the verse, Varno Vyomna Iva. The sky is there. The sky is a very colored. You see, uh, they say this Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis is not uh, out there, it is in your mind. So what they do, they sit in a flight. When Aurora Borealis is going on, they sit in a flight and go into that Aurora Borealis. They find nothing there. <laughs> There is nothing sitting there or doing like this. <laughs> there is nothing. So, till today physics should not, could not decide whether yellow color is outside or inside. They have had to decide that. So, where is this yellow color? <laughs> so, if yellow color is a lot low, whether it is outside or inside, eh? suppose you sit in a... You see, what they do, a, a, a hurricane is there. So, they sit in a flight, a particular kind of a aeroplane, and go into the hurricane. They are going through the hurricane. Now they are going to the eye of the hurricane. And having, there it is very quiet. And now he has to come out of it. He faces a real, real danger of life and death. He may die also. But somehow, cautiously, he from the eye of the hurricane, he enters into the arms of the hurricane, that spiral arms, and he comes out of it. It is like you are entering into, the flight is entering into a dense wall. It has to pierce that wall of clouds and wind, floating, uh, flying at a huge speed. And if you align with it, it will pull you into the spiral. If you go against it, it will, you are hitting a wall and the plane is broken apart. So you have to cut across it at 90 degrees. You have to carefully cut across it. And the whole flight shakes like a, a piece of cloth. And with some difficulty he comes out. So this is their experience with a hurricane. Whereas uh, they take the same plane and go into Aurora Borealis. There is nothing. Space it is. There is nothing there. Then uh, they go into this um, Indrathanus, the rainbow. Uh, so nothing. There, nothing is there. Only you stand here you see it there. If you take a flight and go there, you don't see anything there. You don't find any, no colors. And then blue color. You take a flight and go there. You go any length of, uh, you take, sit in a racket and go and go and go and go and go. Hundred miles you go. You don't see any blue color. The Jagat is like that. It is just not there. For no Yomna Iva. Chale, next verse. 
ദൃശ്യം നാസ്തീതി ബോധേന മനസോ ദൃശ്യമാർജ്ജനം സമ്പന്നം ചേത്തടുപ്പന്ന തലാ നിർവാണ നിർവൃതി സാധന നിധിധ്യാസനം ബോധേന യു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ശ്രവണ യു ഡു man and also you can do when you find time and then you get some understanding some understanding it is not the realization but it's okay it is on the way so bodhena now you do you you start practicing it so practicing means not uh, taking dumbbells and doing this and that you do meditation vidhyasanam you do so uh, shankara says in mandukya bhashya vedanta abhyasinantu so the question is raised ajate strasatam those who fear ajati so they are afraid of ajati so because they develop a model based on jati jati means creation so there is a model based on creation a creation is real based on that all karmakanda is created all kinds of upasanas are created even such certain philosophical doctrines are based on some kind of a creation some kind of a creation uh, so suppose uh, uh, you you don't accept any kind of creation whatsoever no creation whatever name you give you call it manifestation you call it uh, transformation you call it appearance whatever name you give to it it is just negated no jati if you say that then many many positions that you are upholding with all your uh, enthusiasm and love get uh, totally shaken it is like pulling the rug from under the feet and so ajate prasatam the people are afraid of ajati then shankara makes a distinction it is the karma people and upasaka people who are afraid of ajati vedanta abhyasinantu on the other hand those who practice vedanta for them ajati is a lovable thing like that something to that effect you have to check it uh, so he says that way therefore uh, what you have to do is uh, having uh, having uh, heard that drishyam nasti so you you say it categorically drishyam nasti you say it on the movie screen there are no uh, there are no scenes scenes appear scenes appear ch- a child knows a child knows the scenes appear okay you say it say it god bless you say it scenes appear now you now you say the next bolo na scenes nasti nastyeva so drishyam nasti iti bodhena try to understand that becomes easy you know so in spite of its appearance it just doesn't exist iti bodhena then now you can do is you take a wet cloth and mop the mirror so in the mirror there are so many pictures so take a wet cloth if it is possible and mop the mirror so manaso drushya marjanat marjanam is mopping with a wet cloth now what is the wet cloth the meditation so this is dhyasana is the wet cloth take it and uh mob you you clean up this mind manaso drushya marjanat drop it drop all your thoughts so the gnanam and gnayam sahopalambha you you can ghata ghata is ghata ha upalabhyate ghata appears or seems to appear seems to be or be chalo kuch bhi ho seems to be or be only when there is a perception of part jnana and jnaya are always together without jnana the the part uh, it is not uh, experienced at all it is not appreciated experienced there is no upalabdhi of the part without knowledge therefore when you say part is there is part thought consequent upon part thought only or simultaneous with part thought only there is part altogether minus part thought what kind of part is what kind of existence it is uh, therefore so the thought is the the critical aspect so somebody say somebody like me says there is no object there is no part outside thought 
somebody else may not uh, appreciate it straight away for whatever reason but still the path thought is essential now uh, you you wipe out this path thought thought clean it up uh, and so you see even in uh, a worldly situation constantly getting preoccupied with the thoughts the entire day time how do you feel is it a very wise thing to you I, it, it does it look like that there must be some some time a few moments in life in a day that the mind is not preoccupied with anything whatsoever always preoccupied with something or the other uh, so uh, then uh, uh, then, then there is no exploration in them because you fill the mind with something or the other so you say this is sacred that is not sacred so it is your mental position only and so you you divide like that and fill the mind with all sacred things so you you don't know a situation where the mind is not filled with anything whatsoever therefore that also that is, that is important exploration so because uh, atma is a dimension not belonging to the body mind dimension atma is not the same as body mind dimension and uh, therefore uh, you should uh, uh, get connected to uh, the dimension also you should not get uh, held by um, the the mental dimension alone therefore there must be a time some some uh, some sadhana in the form of uh thoughtlessness manaso drushya marjanam then uh, what happens you know sampannam chet if that much you can accomplish quite well sampannam means it is it is accomplished well that means you really really abide in the thoughtless state sampannam chet tada tat tat means tada then para nirvana nirvruti hi utpanna so the supreme happiness nirvruti hi para is supreme nirvruti hi is bliss take it like that or you say happiness put with a capital h so it's something you have to say something so para nirvruti hi nirvana free from all pain and suffering that is the meaning of nirvana so putting an end to the dukkha so para nirvana nirvruti hi utpanna it becomes evident it is created created means it is not that fully created it is there but uh, hidden because the active mind hyperactive mind throws a screen of thoughts over the reality which is yourself and uh, it gives uh, a false notion that there is no dimension other than body mind dimension uh so and uh, then uh, it is like uh, when you don't know the raju the sarpa appears uh, real it is something like as long as sarpa appears real you don't know raju so some kind of anyonya shri uh, uh, happens and so we get caught in the dimension of body mind which is entirely mithya therefore there is a thing called nididhyasanam in nididhyasanam you sit and think that is not nididhyasanam If you sit and think that is not nididhyasana that it depends upon what you think suppose you are thinking of god's name or god's form that is called dhyanam if you are thinking of something else that is called daydreaming so it is not about sitting and thinking it is about the developing uh, cultivating that inner silence and uh, that is amani bhavah this is godapada acharya so that inner silence you develop and uh, in that inner silence slowly that insight will come you know what is the insight the insight is uh, these opposites dharma dharma he is dharma he is a dharma so these opposites he is my guy he is the opposite guy swa para Uh, this event is a sukha the opposite event like the uh, st- stock is going up sukha stock is coming down dukha so all these opposites they will not be so overwhelming anymore 
but insight you will get it is not about sukha dukha unreal coming from outside and so okay i will consider it as part of the thinking process it nothing happens like that it doesn't happen like that you have to get that insight so from that inner silence it is not shunya from that inner silence you seem to realize something i cannot explain what is that something and then i open my eyes and see sukha dukha a favorable and favorable and they seem to uh, be able to handle them with a with a kind of equanimity this is practical vedanta it is not some speculation and when i see a person uh behaving in a particular way responding in one way and another person responding in the opposite way it's okay chalta hai it's all play of the game of the mind i am not uh, um uh, disconcerted that much so this is how by the dhyasanam one has to cultivate that inner silence and at the very beginning of the inner silence but you take that inner silence to its logical conclusion para nirvana nirvruti that is the jivan mukti it is the supreme state it is the sachid ananda brahmananda it is so this is how jivan mukti is being described by um so valmik maharshi in yoga vasishtha uh, it may not entirely agree with some of the things that we know or we hold on to or we uh, have ideas about it may not entirely agree with it but anyway i have tried to be uh, faithful to the verse before me and so thank you for your kind attention hari hi om tat sat shri krishna hari